Hey guys, Malkuth 1974 coming back at you with another tutorial on Kerbal Space Program. This time we're gonna concentrate on getting to the moon. Yes, it's pronounced moon, not moon, but moon. M U N with a little rabbit face or whatever eyes over the U there. So, we're gonna build this rocket the same way we built our other rocket for my orbiting video. We're gonna go to the command pod mark one. You can just left click on it to bring it up there. You guys know how that works by now. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to add the separator and the control again. So we need to go to structural and add the TR18A. And we need to go to uh, control and we need to add an advanced SAS module. That all helps you separate your pod and help you control your vessel with SAS. Next thing we need to do is we need to add propulsion to it. This time we're going to add the FLT400. A little bit bigger time, a little bit bigger this time to help us get into space. Actually, we'll we'll talk about what we're doing here. Utility, we need to add the parachute for our return trip. Don't forget that. And while we're in utility, we might as well go right to the LT1 landing struts. Click like this. Go one, two, three, four with the X keys to for we can get our symmetry mode going. And when you place your legs, you want to make sure that you place your legs in between the door because we're going to have a ladder coming down. So we want the ladder to be able to come down and put our uh, Kerbal in there. Place it kind of far down for it can uh, get past the engine. And while we're still in here, we're going to grab the Toulouse LV Bay Mobile Enhancer, which is just the big technical term for a ladder. You gotta get rid of symmetry mode by pushing X until you see the little one down here. This is symmetry mode, by the way. You can, uh, if you guys wonder what the angle mode does, it helps you uh, get things more lined up. So you're actually on a on an angle. So you can push the angle mode if you want. You'll get it. You get this exactly right. We have a ladder now. We have our legs. We have our separator, and we have our SAS, and we have. Uh, the parachute. So we're all checked there. We still need an engine though. And we're going to rely on our same trusted LV909 liquid engine. There. Now we have the orbiter and the lander in all in one package all set. So unlike the last time, we want to get this orbiter, all its fuel, into orbit. And if we can, and you can with this design I'm going to give you get this to the moon without ever using any of this fuel we don't want to start using this fuel until basically it's landing on the moon just a little bit so try to remember that we need to build a lifter that's going to lift this whole thing in there so we're going to have to change up our design a little bit so let's go to control we got to go to Rockamax brand decoupler again oh sorry wrong one uh, the TR18A there we go, now we got our decoupler. And we're gonna go back to our trusted old FLT800 fuel tanks. Just like before, we're gonna add two of them. And now this is where the similarities in the designs end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to structural, and I want you to grab the TT70 radial decouplers this time. Just like before, place one down, and then go back to propulsion, and grab another FLT 800 fuel tank place it on there again if it does not place remember you can just place it on the uh, there's a bug in the game right now so just place it tank to tank it will clear the bug out and you'll be able to actually connect it to uh, your cup decoupler you want to grab another FLT 800 and now we have two now before we go on here a little bit let me fix this a little bit it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I did that. I want you to go back to structural and I want you to grab the little EAS4 strut connector. If you have vanilla, uh, this vanilla game without any mods, it's right there. Okay. What this does is we need to uh, structurally enhance our vessel to make sure it's stable, it doesn't wobble, and all that stuff. So, going from this tank to this tank, put one strut there. And grab another one, put a strut down here, and then last but not least, 
aim right for the middle of the tank and place it just like that for you have a, a little bit of a the, like just like that <laughs> basically how it works now I want you to grab the strut make sure it turns green and pull it off now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna place it back just like that you might want to have the uh, engine I mean uh, this fuel tank just a little bit coming below the middle fuel tank now we need to do some entry mode again so hit X three times one two three that'll add four brand new tanks and we also already have all our struts so I like to do things like that I make the first tank and then I do an exact copy to make everything look good don't worry about the ladder because that won't be there when we're done so there we're all done with that now what we need to do is we need to do something that's called the asparagus uh, mode or the asparagus uh, uh, I don't know the exact technical name but first we want to put cementary mode into single just like that and then it's important that you actually follow the way I'm doing this because of the way things flow so on the first tank grab whatever choose whatever tank you want you need to go from from that tank to the tank right next to it and then that tank that you just connected to you need to connect that to the middle tank so we have two tanks, we got this one connecting to this one and then we got this one connected to the middle. Make sure you keep it on the bottoms because of the way the fuel flows, that's the way we need to have it. We need to move to the next two tanks and we'll do the same thing. Do not connect this tank to this tank but connect the two empty tanks that aren't connected to anything. So we're going to go from this tank to this one and then the one that we just connected to we're going to connect to the middle tank. Now what this is called, it's called asparagus mode. Uh, when we take off, every engine that we have on here is going to launch. And what's going to happen is the fuel in these two tanks are going to drain first. And they're going to supply this tank to keep it full and the middle tank to keep it full. Once we drop these two tanks, they're going to move to these two tanks. And these ones are going to keep the middle tank full until they're empty and they drop and then when we get to the last stage we have a full middle tank which will get us to space and believe it or not will get us to the moon so the mun sorry guys I didn't mean to do that so what I suggest we need to do now is that we're not done we need to set this up in staging uh, let's let's add now nah, we can do it like this we need to set this up in staging for it works correctly so what we need to do since these two these this tank the one that is a uh, connected to the outside tank, the first tank in the series, which is the exact opposite. So this one and these ones are going to drop first. So what we need to do is we need to hit the plus key on our uh, our staging here to add one more thing. We need to click on the staging. All of them are in three. As you can see, I can touch them and they'll click on. You want to click on them to shut them off. And now we need to find this radial decoupler. So I just go, oh, and I found it. It's the very first one. And now how the game works, I automatically know that the, sec the third one is the, the next one. See how I clicked on it? So actually all you got to do is, I didn't do it right there. All you got to do is click the first one, hold the control key, and hit the third one. This is for me. It might be different for you guys, no matter what tank you're using. And you can double check. I can see that both of these are done. Since these tanks are going to be the first to drop, we want to set it right into number four. So now these tanks will drop, and then these tanks will drop, and then we have all these. So while we're up here, let's just set the staging for this top one too. We have this engine and this separator right here. We want these together. So now they'll, they'll uh, separate and launch at the same time. If you want, you can, uh, if you like to do it the way I do, you can separate the parachute and this separator for you can have more control over when your parachute comes out so you can do that if you want now basically the last stage we need to do is we need to add the engines and what I this is a uh, kind of important to listen to but on the outside tank the four outside tanks we want to add the LVT 30 uh, liquid fuel engines these engines do not have thrust vectoring so we do not want these on our uh, accent stage so let's place these, hit X to put it in symmetry mode and it will automatically place four tanks. 
and we'll keep them right here in stage five. We want them separate. separate. The next tank, we're going to go to the LVT-45. Now, this is important. Go back to uh, single symmetry mode. We're going to put this on the middle tank. Now, this engine has thrust vectoring, and we want as much control over this middle stage as possible because this middle stage is going to get us to the moon, and in space, we're going to need the thrust vectoring to uh, help us uh, move around. Uh, so basically the engine is actually done but we need to fix one thing in our staging we need to grab that middle stage and bring it all the way to stage five and now we have a perfectly good uh, ship let's bring the ship down a little bit hit shift and then left click will select every part on the ship and then you can use the scroll wheel to bring it down to where you want it and we actually need to add one more thing. We need to add the TT18A launch stabilizers. That's in the structural thing. So we'll just grab that. And we'll put them on the outside uh, asparagus things. And we'll click it. And that'll be it. The ship is done. Let's go over make sure we have everything set. Oh, actually, we're not done. We need to move the staging up to 5 to make sure that when these declamp the engines go off at the same time for it doesn't fall to the ground and blow up so we have our parachute for the lander we're all set there we have our separator for the when we uh, do our re-entry and we have our control to help us keep our, our craft stable in space and everything else we got our extra big fuel tank to uh, we're going to use to take off from the moon and get back to uh, the planet Kerbin and we got our legs to actually land on the moon for we don't blow anything up we got our engine and we got our fuel tanks and we got our asparagus they are all set up double check them make sure they're set up correctly and we got all our engines we got the bigger engine on the outside and we got the thrust vectoring engine on the inside so let's go and you can save this whatever you, as whatever you want you can call it lander you can give it a name you know feel good about it and there we go I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna launch clear your launch pad if you have stuff on there <laughs> Let the game load a little bit. Oh, look, we got Jebediah. Jebediah is going to be the first man to for the moon for all of us. All right, so what I need you to do is I need you to hit T. That turns on our SAS. That will help us keep us stable while we are actually taking off in our ascent. Uh, remember, the shift key increases your thrust. The control key decreases it. Shift key increases it. And if you want to cut your uh, thrust uh, totally off without using the control. All you gotta do is hit X and that will take your thrust out. Now before I take off, uh, we need to be uh, a little bit more conservative with how we take off and what we do. Um, we want to keep our speed uh, a good uh, round number that I've learned and I've, a lot of people have learned. We want to start uh, our gravity turn at 10,000. But before we get to 10,000, we do not want this rocket to get above 150 ms. Because if you let your rocket get above 150 ms, you are fighting the gravity of Kerbin and you are wasting fuel. We need to be very fuel efficient when we're going to the moon or any planet out there or you will find that you will run out of uh, fuel. So I actually designed this. Again, this rocket is what we call in the Kerbal Space Program over engineered you could get to the moon with only one of these uh, stages here and that could be a challenge for you guys next time once you get this practice trust me you can get to the moon with just one stage and take off and get back to Kerman so here we go we're gonna take off in five four three two one and there we go we are off we got our SAS on and we are very stable we are watching our speed it's growing very rapidly, but it should start slowing down as we start fighting gravity. But remember, I do not want to get over 150. And I'm getting a little bit too fast, so I'm going to actually start slowing it down a little bit by hitting the control key just to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to still continue to watch how fast this is growing. And I'm going to watch my, uh, my altitude in meters to see how fast that's going. Uh, we're at 3,000, and remember, we want to start our gravity turn at 10,000. I'm going to bring my uh, speed down just a little bit more because I got to 125, and it was growing a little bit faster. As you can tell, as we start hitting certain stages, 
in uh, the atmosphere, we, uh, we start losing the atmosphere, uh, we start gaining a lot of speed. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit more. And I'm probably not going to touch it anymore. I'm probably just going to leave it just like that. We're at 6,000. Uh, we get a... Oh, oh! I lost my staging. Drop your staging. Don't forget that. Uh, increase your speed a little bit to get it back up there, to get it back to climbing. I almost totally forgot about that. <laughs> Too busy talking about uh, keeping attention. So as you can tell, there's a lot of things to keep attention here, your attention on. I'm going to keep it... We're going to hit our 10,000 mark. And I'm going to start my gravity turn. Go all the way to 90 degrees. I always just go to 90. A lot of people don't, but I do. It just helps us concentrate. Now we're over 10,000. I'm going to punch this to full speed. So uh, let your uh, uh, thrust go to full speed and we'll grab. Also, you see the little uh, prograde thing right there? We want to follow this prograde all the way until it stops. So just keep basically right behind it when we're flying. What this is going to do is going to level out our uh, accent out of the planet and it's going to allow us to uh, keep where we are. Now let's go to the orbital map. Click this up and we'll control everything from here. Remember keep your uh, we want to keep this uh, accent pretty uh, level. So I'm at 23,000, 24,000, 25,000 uh, in this particular one, I am I am aiming for 150. So remember that, 120. I mean, sorry, we're about to lose this uh, next stage. And when you lose your stage, you want to make sure that your your vessel is stabilized, or you might actually uh, have your engines collide with this. So I'm stabilized, and I'm going to lose it. And now we're back to just this uh, the middle stage. I'm going to keep following this down. I'm going to go check the space, see where I'm at. I'm at 37,000, 38, 39, 40, 41. Yeah, we're going to I'm going to probably keep it right here cuz I want this to start growing. As you can tell, this stage is going to get us pretty far. It's going to get us to orbit, it's going to stabilize our orbit and it's at the minimal, it's going to get you to the moon. I'm just going to keep it just like this. I like where I'm going with this. I'm going to keep it at 51. Uh, my speed, my orbital speed is actually uh, going insane. Uh, you need a uh, 23 or 2400 ms to have an orbital speed or escape speed to get into orbit, orbit of Kerbin. I'm going to keep following this. I'm at set. Okay, so now we're growing. Now we're definitely in space if we uh, when we get there. 92, 100. I want to get to 120. And 120. There we go. So now we're just going to wait and get there. If you want, you can do this either, either way. You can set up a node. I'm going to set up the node for you guys to uh, help even out your orbit. So I'm going to get that set to 119, 121. I don't think I can fix that much better than that. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to put my reticule here on the blue nav marker. You might have to find it. If you're wondering why uh, the blue nav marker isn't on the uh, prograde, well, it technically is. It's at a, I don't know what it's exactly called, but this, believe it or not, how uh, the prograde work is that uh, this whole thing, this whole line on this side is actually the prograde, but this is the most optimal. And when the computer did its uh, calculations, it just came up that this was the fastest way to get us to 119. I mean, I don't know the exact uh, how everything works, but you'll start to learn that there's certain spots in the prograde that you can help uh, adjust ways. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to start noticing where this blue book, uh, this blue line is ending up, because you can use this to help you land. Um, a lot of times when you uh, try to land an orbiter in uh, or a lander on the moon, and you just go. Uh, the retrograde, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, since uh, you can set up your node just like everything else, even when you're doing on Kerbin, what happens when you go to retrograde, 
where you have your where you think you're going to land, it's going to cause it to uh, actually move because what you're doing is you're slowing down and you're not you're no longer going fast enough to actually uh, reach where you are and you have to slow down unfortunately or you'll hit the ground too hard. So a lot of times what you can do is that you can still set this is prograde by the way, but on retrograde or prograde, you can set your reticle to somewhere in between and you can still slow down but you can uh, minimize how much this you lose here. So that's something you'll learn when uh, you get used to things a little bit. Um, the node system is extremely helpful in this game. Uh, it gives you that point of reference that you need to actually do what we do. So let me just get this thing to here. It says it's going to be a 10 second burn which it exactly is because I have that bigger stage that's going to do this. Getting to the moon is actually extremely easy. I'm going to show you something I learned from Scott Manley. If you guys have never seen his videos, he's probably one of the best uh, uh, Kerbal Space Program Let's Players, and actually he's got a lot of tutorials and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start this burn now. My time has run out. Yeah, so I was like saying, he's probably one of the best uh, tutorials out there. He's real smart. He's uh, <laughs> He could actually explain how all this stuff works better than I could, but I'm just an average gamer, and a lot of times I kind of hope that people would rather have an average gamer's point of view on this than a, you know, maybe it'll be better for them. I don't know. I just make them because I like Kerbal Space Program. So, we're all set. What I want you to do is I want you to set up on the prograde, which is right there. And now we need to get to the... Actually, look how, look how much fuel I have left. This fuel right here is enough to get me to the moon and possibly help me start landing. It won't help, you can't obviously land with it, you gotta get rid of it, but this is where you want to be. But I gave you guys enough fuel where uh, you're in trouble. And now, for an average gamer like me and maybe you guys, I can tell you right now, if you're using this stage already and you have less than half fuel, do redo the launch. You need at least half the fuel in this tank to get off the moon, back in orbit of the moon, the moon, the moon, and back into uh, Kerbin atmosphere to land. You need at least half. I've, I've done it many times, and I always end up with half fuel left in this. And I'm doing pretty optimal burns because I've done it a lot and manual landing. So just remember that you want to keep track of your fuel levels here. So let's get to the moon. Let's find where it is actually. Oh. This is perfect. So what we're going to do is that we're going to wait. The moon's right here, and I'm right here. It might actually be too late. Yep, it's too late. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait. I'm going to go... I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to wait till we come back to the day side again. Believe it or not, we should actually flip over again. All right. Let me see where we're at. Okay. So what we want to do, put this back on the prograde, which means it will be pointing towards the moon when we actually do this burn. You don't need any node system in this, you don't need, you just, if you do just like I'm doing, you will get to the moon easily. Alright, so I'm going to get that right on the node. And what we're going to do is that we're going to wait until we're going to keep a visual right here but we're going to wait until the moon starts rising we can see it over the horizon of Kerbin and then we're going to uh, start our burn right now I'm going to hit F5 if you're wondering what F5 is F5 is a quick save you always want a quick save in this game because you never know what's going to happen F5 quick saves and holding F9 will load the quick save if something happens so let's check out where that moon is we have a yeah, we actually have a little ways, so we'll just fast forward a little bit. Okay. So yeah, you're going to have to probably put your prograde back to where it belongs, and I'm turning wrong. Oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, remember, I there's no uh, RCS on this, so it is basically we're using the... Uh, the torque of the command capsule to actually move the vessel since that's if you ever wondered if you actually try to play with a command uh, capsule 
it has its own little magic uh, <laughs> magic uh, uh, movement system somehow and that's how this vessel is moving right now if we had thrust the thrust vectoring on would be a little bit better off but you can do that if you want but I wouldn't waste the fuel on that I'll hit F5 again and I'm just gonna wait for it in this view We're actually getting to the night side. There it is. So we want to get this back on prograde. And you can burn right here. It's no big deal. It's better to start burning uh, right when you start seeing it, but I was fast forwarding it, so it's no big deal. I've actually burned it when it was way up here. There we go. I'm going to start it up. Full throttle. And since we don't have a uh, timer on this to tell us when we're going to get to the moon, we're going to have to watch it from here. And as we can tell, our AP or Apple Apis or Apple Apis or whatever the hell it's called is moving out and we want to be very careful we want to wait until what's called an encounter with this line happens with the moon you don't have to select it you don't have to do anything all we gotta do as you can tell that engine that we have on this thing gets us there very quickly so I'm gonna start slowing down now so and there it is now what we want to do is we want to get our PE as close to the moon as possible right now without messing up our orbital incline. So I'm going to put my uh, mouse over the PE and it's going to tell me what our meters are right now. I'm going, to, I'm going to hit the thrust but I'm going to control it a little bit. I'm going to keep hit. You can actually hit find controls too by the way. Find controls is uh, I believe the caps lock key. I usually just kind of eye it like this. I'm at 178, 86. I want to get to 60. That's where I want to land. There we go. That's close enough. So. you don't go over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up in a maneuver, mo maneuver node uh, by clicking. I'll do that over for you guys. You want to click on the PE and maneuver and we want to grab the retrograde uh, little button here and we want to start closing in that orbit. Bring it down. It gets a little touchy so remember that. You want to be you want to get it down to about 60, which is what I have the other one set to. And it, right there, it switched. So we got 62 there and 58. I want to kind of mess with that a little bit. 62, 63, that's all right. We can do that. So we are set up. What I need to do now is we're still on the retrograde and we need to pick a spot to land on the moon. I suggest uh, picking a uh, day spot and as always I have forgotten to put lights on this to help with the lighting for this video. So if it's getting dark right here I, I extremely apologize. The new lighting and the new 1.9 makes it absolutely essential that you have lights and I never added them. I am a bad Kerbal knot. But you guys get the point. I'm going to add a maneuver here and what I'm going to aim for is I'm going to aim for the lip of this uh, big crater in the moon. I'm going to add a maneuver right on the PE and I'm going to add retrograde to this and I'm going to bring that marker right about there. See how it's landed right there? Now like, like I said before the reason we do that is because I'm going to technically probably land a little bit in the middle or over here even though it says here because we need to break our speed coming down so what happens is that we are gonna you know we're not gonna it's gonna change where we're gonna land because we're not going as fast anymore so you're changing your orbital speed I'm gonna use this time to actually get me set back up on the retrograde that's prograde we don't want that no oh, prograde prograde is a empty circle a retrograde is a circle with an X or a plus or a 
something actually we want to get to the blue thing I'm not even talking it should be pretty close to the retrograde anyway since that's what we're doing you could actually not even set up a node if you did not want to you could just put your reticle on uh, your reticle on the retrograde wait for a little bit and then hit it and then you'll the same thing will happen so you got one minute I'm gonna hit F5 to quick save this fast forward just a little bit Hopefully we won't lose too much. Got two seconds, two, blah, blah. We're coming down to four, three, two. I'm gonna start right at zero. And I'm gonna hit this. And I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit. We wanna save some fuel. We don't wanna use all our fuel. We wanna conserve. And exit out. Bang, bang, boom. We are now on a descent trajectory. Now you wanna keep your reticle on your retrograde. This video is going to be a little bit longer than the orbital one because there's just so much more we have to do, but we're just going to have to deal with it. I'm going to hit F5 again to quick save, and I am going to fast forward, and I'm going to tell you guys exactly where to stop your fast. It's going to stop it automatically, but... So, we're right there right now, I'm going to go to this view, I'm going to start this burn. I'm going to end up losing this eventually, but see how much it's nice to have these engines because it bleeds so much speed off. I'm going to slow it down a little bit, I'm getting to 200, oh, and I just lost that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar, I'm going to lose that stage, and now I am using my landing stage. A lot easier to control so you probably won't be used to that so be very careful. Still want to get this to 200 and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little bit there. The reason you want to control how fast you're falling is that you don't wanna you don't want to uh, you, you want to use as less fuel as you can. I'm gonna hit the G key which is gonna put my landing gear down If you want, you could technically shut SAS off. I usually use it just for a little bit. Remember, the F key is find controls for SAS. We're at seven. I don't want to lose too much here. I'm going to add a little fuel here just to keep my my speed down about 200. I'm at six. I'm going to drop my speed down to 100. And I'm going to keep following that. Oh, we're almost there. I'm going to put the T right there. I'm going to keep giving me a little bit of a kill. And I'm going to shut this down. We're at 4,000. Killing my vertical speed or my horizontal speed or whatever the hell it's called. You can tell the ground's coming up very, very quickly. I want to keep this at about 100. I don't want to burn too much because we don't want to waste fuel. Remember, this might take you a few times to do, so uh, that's why you save in orbit. That way you can practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. I'm at 2,000. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lose all my vertical speed now, or my horizontal speed, whatever it's called. I'm going to shut this down. Keep your reticle on the retrograde, that's how you lose all your speed. We're going to basically stop in mid-air is what's going to end up happening. And I'm going to keep going down, keep going down. I've pretty much lost all my vertical speed. Take RCS off, we don't even have RCS. I'm going to lose all of it right like that. Try to keep losing it. I'm still going a little bit. It's hard to tell, but I'm going to try there. Now I've lost all. Now I'm going straight down. We're coming down to the ground. I see my shadow. That's one way. So I'm going to put the engines on. Oops, I actually uh, gained a little bit there. Now you want to hit the ground under five. Hopefully you actually hit it under three. So I'm going to keep going like that. And and look how much fuel I have left. I barely used any. If you follow the rules, 
if you uh, do what I said, do not do uh, burns all the way down. Do not start your burn too easy, but do not start your burn too late or you will crash and burn. So we are on the moon. Jebediah Kerbal is on the moon. We're going to extend the ladder. Remember, we added this beautiful little ladder. It's the only thing that has lights. You know, we got our guy to the moon. He needs to get out. He needs to stretch his legs. He needs to look around. So just all you need to do is left click on the hatch and push the EVA. That will allow him to come right up. Then all you got to do is hit the S key or the down key and he will climb down. This nice little ladder there. He's all happy and he will not fall off and he is showing off already and he tried to do a flip and it didn't work for him but that's all right Jebediah Kerbal he's happier than anybody could ever be hey Jebby what's up that's right he's happy you can hit the space key he'll jump up in the air uh, just like in uh, Kerbin, we want to take off and we want to go to 90 degrees. We want to keep our same incline. So look for the 90 degrees. It's right there. And I'm going to hit the T keys already set, but we're going to need to change our, uh, we're going to need to go to 90 degrees as soon as possible. So I want to get us up in the air. And I am going to start my 90 degree turn right now. I'm going to hit the T key. And we're going to see where this is leading us. Don't want to get too high. Probably 60 will work for us. So you want to control how much height you get. And you want to even this out. For we don't have to burn so much fuel to get our uh, periapsis up and running. So let's just go right to a 90 degree turn. We're at 40, 44, 47, 49. 40. Like I said, 60 is good. There we go. You can set up your node if you want. What I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to burn prograde when I get when I get to an appropriate uh, area. You guys can set up your node. You can do it either way. Um, whatever works for you guys. Look at that, 63 and 60. That's pretty good for a manual burn. Oh, look at that. We don't need the gear anymore, so we'll bring that back up. Look at that. Jebediah is happy. He's heading back to Kerbin. He's going to be a hero among the Kerbalites. So, we need to get back to Kerbal. So what we actually need to do is that we need to actually burn right about here. You want to burn on the opposite side of where you're going. So if we burn here, it's going to extend our AP over here, and it's going to bring us towards uh, Kerbin. So easiest way to do it. That's why I gave you guys plenty of fuel. So here we go. It's going to it's going to switch real switch. Oh, look at that. So what we need to do is we need to mess with this now to set up a actual. You could actually. Uh, you could probably uh, get into this. Uh, orbit of Kerbin and then set it up. Well, the way you're going to do it, but I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to grab this blue thing right here and I'm going to shrink it and I'm going to shrink this. You're going to have to mess with this a little bit. I'm going to shrink it some more. I might not be able to do this. I did it, I did it last time, but I don't know. I might not be able to get this to work. We'll find out. We don't want to mess with that. Uh, it doesn't seem to be... I might have to set this up at an angle. Oh, there we go. We'll change the angle, and it should allow us to... Uh, to change the angle of the node, all you got to do is click on the middle part of it and go just like that. And I will try to get that to burn. It's going to cost us a lot of fuel, but I have plenty. There we go. And I will land on the... I will land on the, hopefully I'll land on the right side of, when it's bright. I hate landing at night. How are we supposed to celebrate landing on the moon if we don't land at, at night? So I got 40 minutes. Hit F5 as always to quick save. We're going to fast forward this baby. You can mess with this the way you want. Uh, basically, you want to either get into an orbit with Kerbin and then you want to deorbit. It's basically, it's a simple thing to do and you want to do it in as much as less efficient. I didn't do a very efficient burn there, uh, but 
I have plenty of fuel, and we might also burn it up before we get to Kerbin. So, oh, and by the way, you guys, you guys that want to get to Midness, uh, I probably won't do a uh, tutorial on that, but I can tell you right now that this vessel will get you to Midness twice. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's actually easier to go to Midness than the Moon. The only difference between Midness and the Moon is you need to burn about 300 more Delta V. Actually, it's more like 150, I think. 150 to 200 Delta V to actually get into a uh, encounter with them. And once you get into a encounter with them, Mimbus has very little gravity, so it's actually very... I'm going to start my burn now, by the way. It's actually very easy to land on Mimbus, take off from Mimbus, and get back into an orbit with Kerbin because you don't have any gravity uh, to deal with. Oh, we've got very little gravity. A lot less gravity than what's on the moon. I actually, you can see where our AP just changed right there. Oh, look at that. I'm going to show you guys exactly how much fuel I have left after this is done. I'm going to watch it. And keep watching it. And there. We are now going to land. Let's take a look at my fuel. Oh, look. I actually used a little bit more than half this time. The reason I used a little bit more half because that was an extremely, extremely inefficient burn back to the moon. But... If you guys save what I tell you to save, you'll have plenty of fuel to actually get back there. I think that was like a 384 MS burn, and you could probably do it in a lot less than that. But we're not going to get into that. F5 to save. Fast forward. A actually, let's watch this. Let's watch. Oh, beautiful. All right. So, guys, what I've noticed that I've actually done here is that I've actually added way too much uh, Delta V to this, so I would actually slam into the <laughs> slam into the moon, and we don't want to be slamming into the moon. So I'm gonna fix this right now, and I'm gonna get that up to about three seven. Yeah, it's about enough. Three eight, three nine. That's good. So we want to fix this as soon as possible. I can't believe I almost crashed you guys back into the moon. Yeah, we don't want that. We do not want that. Bad Malkuth. Bad Malkuth. Alright, let's get this burn done with. One, two, three. I want to bring that up to about four. There we go. Bad, bad Malkuth. Almost crashing us into the planet. And as you can tell, now we are actually going to not land. We'll fix that. We'll have to fix that over here somewhere. So let's get rid of that. See, I made a mistake. We'll fix it because we can do that. And then I'm going to actually set this to land just like that. I could probably set that like that. 33? No, we don't want that. Yeah, We're just going to land right there. There. I still have plenty of fuel. That is why we give ourselves extra fuel. But well, we can make mistakes like that and then get us back to the planet. Man, I was doing so well. I was thought I was going to get through this whole video without making one mistake. But I want to keep the mistake in there for you guys. For you actually see what I did. That even me, a not professional at this game, can mess it up. Look how close we're getting to the planet. Don't worry. We will clear it. We can take a look at some uh, beautiful landscaping of the moon. Or the moon. Even I call it the moon every once in a while. Wow, that's kind of an interesting ridge right there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, I saw something over there. There are anomalies on the moon, if you guys are wondering. Strange things. And there is the planet Kerbin. We are flying towards it. This time, we're not on a trajectory towards the moon. Moon! That would have been so funny if I crashed you guys into the moon. What would you guys have done? You would have been so angry at me. You said, what the hell, Malkuth? So I just fixed it. Just make sure when you guys do your burn that you don't make that mistake. Uh, F2. Yep, I'm already at 29. So this is actually a very bad, bad speed to be hitting the atmosphere at. This would probably annihilate you in, uh, when they add the heat. So, yeah, you're going to want to actually use all that fuel to orbit planet Kerbin. Set up a nice, gentle, uh, deorbiting maneuver, and do this. But I just, I just like seeing the flames. 
because they're just so awesome. Uh, since I'm going so fast, I will probably actually start seeing the flames at 35. Let's let's make a bet. 35. We'll say 35. Oh, I just uh, just lied to y'all. It was at 35. Look at that. See how I can barely see anything. That would absolutely annihilate my vessel. That is awesome. But it's okay because we like seeing flaming Kerbal technology on fire. Oh, I just took a picture too, by the way, because it's just awesome. And look at Jebediah. He's all happy about it. He's got flames around him. He's like, woo, ah, e. And we can see my surface speed uh, slowing down. Going very, very slowly. Going down to 900. We're going to start kicking this. And then we're going to lose this stage. And we are going to land safely on Kerb. Hey, is that a... Did I actually land? Holy crap! That is KSC right there. I literally, without knowing, almost put it there. It's right there. I'm going to lose that. And I'm going to shoot the parachute out. Remember, hopefully we added all parachutes to our thing. Yep, right there. Kerbal Space Command is right there. You cannot get any better landing than that. Come on, guys. Admit it. I did that without even thinking. Usually I don't think, but yeah. Remember, you do not want to have time acceleration on when you this chute will actually open at 500 meters. We're not over the sea, so actually we're probably less than that. If you actually go to IVA, you can look in your cockpit and you can actually see your true level above sea. Bing, bong, boom. But, ah well. Oh, wait. To get out of this view, just hit C again. It'll bring you back over here. We're coming down at 101. Hey, if you guys want another challenge, try landing with the lander. If you have enough fuel, you can land with that lander. This parachute and a little bit of fuel with the legs extended. Just, just, just giving you guys that little, that little, uh, challenge there. Also the other challenge is that you can get to the moon with only one uh, one stage of asparagus and not messing up at all. You can't mess up but you can do it so to challenge you guys to be more efficient than me you guys can try that. We're almost on the ground. You can tell look how we're gonna hit the ground and we're still at 750 meters so this is Malkuth 1974 and Jebediah Kerbal coming back at you, telling you you can land on the moon too. As always, guys, please subscribe, comment, and rate, and we'll see you guys later. Malkuth out.